Well, I'm Representative uh, Gary McLaren uh, from the Bitterroot. And uh, in September of 2009, I was back in Washington, D.C. for the National Association of Insurance Commissioners Conference. Uh, it was at their invitation on their dime, not yours. And through a strange set of circumstances, ended up in Max Bacchus's hearing room the day they began uh, amendments on the chairman's markup. And during the time I was there, it became very evident to me that those people could care less what the people back home thought, whether it was Montana, Indiana, Oklahoma, wherever. They were bound and determined to push this thing through. So when I got home, I uh, started looking around for what can we do about this, and I found that Alec uh, has a bill, a model bill, that we could use. How many people are familiar with Alec? American Legislature, good, yeah, great organization. Similar to the Heritage Foundation. They had a model bill as a constitutional amendment that says um, that no individual or employer can be required to participate in any particular health insurance plan. It's just that simple, nor may they be fined or sanctioned for not doing so. So I uh, <coughs> asked my senator, Jim Shockley, if he put in the bill request for me, which he did, and um, because I was still up for re-election. I'm not eligible to submit bills at that point. And so I introduced it in this section as House Bill 206. And I'll read it to you. It's very simple. It's the right to choose health insurance coverage. All individuals and employers have the right to choose whether or not to purchase or participate in any plan of health insurance coverage. No individual or employer shall pay a fine, penalty, or fee or be subject to civil or criminal sanction for exercising the right to choose whether or to purchase or participate in health insurance coverage. A health care provider shall not pay a fine, penalty, or fee, or be subject to civil or criminal sanction for accepting direct payment for health care services from an individual or an employer on behalf of an employee if the individual or employer has exercised the right to choose whether to purchase or participate in a plan of health insurance coverage. That's it, pure and simple. That would be Section 36 of Article 2 of the Montana Constitution. The rub is it requires, because it's a constitutional amendment, a two-thirds vote of the legislature. That's 100 votes between the two houses. Um, we passed it out of the House with um, 68 to 32, 68 Republicans for, 32 Democrats against. So it's over in the Senate now, and in fact, we're going to hear it in front of Jason's committee. Uh, tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock. So if you're around and don't have anything else to do, come on down and tell them you think it's a great idea. In the event that we don't get the 100 votes necessary to put it on the ballot in 2012 for voter ratification, because it is a constitution, it's your constitution, you get to ratify the changes. Uh, we're also running the same bill. It was just introduced Saturday as House Bill 609. And it, it says the same thing, but it puts it into statute. And that will be a referendum. Uh, if we pass it as a, a normal bill, put it in the statute, the governor won't sign it. So it won't go anywhere. So we're going to put it on a referendum and send it out directly to you to put in the statute. Now, the big difference between a constitutional amendment and a statute is that the way the U.S. Supreme Court looks at it, which is probably where it's going to end up, a constitutional right carries more weight than a statute does when you're comparing to federal law. And the current Supreme Court, oddly enough, um, has had a very good record the past few years of upholding states' rights. And so we're very hopeful that should it pass, we'd have a good chance of standing up against the individual mandate and the employer mandate uh, in Obamacare. If that doesn't work, well, then we still have the referendum. We can put it in statute. And um, at least we still have a chance of making it through the Supreme Court. So what's wrong with mandates? Well, aside from the, um, the moral, ethical, and philosophical question of whether or not it's right for government to dictate what you must buy, the simple fact is they don't work. Uh, Hawaii, in, back in the 90s, decided it would be a good idea if everybody had health insurance, so they started an employer mandate. All employers had to buy health insurance for their full-time employees. Four years later, they found that 70% of the employers had fired all their full-time employees, rehired them as part-time. That way, they didn't have to buy the insurance. 
So Hawaii has since repealed that law. Uh, Massachusetts, of course, was the first one here on the mainland and started uh, individual mandates as well as employer in 2006. Uh, today, 40% of the people who are unemployed, uh, uninsured in 2006 are still uninsured. It just doesn't work. And as Obamacare has been put forth, um, if you don't buy the insurance and you have to pay a fine, well, who doesn't have insurance? people that can't afford it. So what are we going to do? We're going to make them buy it. They can't afford it. And if they don't, we're going to fine them. Great. And one of the reasons for the mandates is uh, it's for the benefit of the insurance companies. This is supposed to compensate them for having guaranteed issue, which means they have to take people uh, who have pre-existing conditions, which they normally wouldn't do. And so to make up for that, we're going to have the individual mandate. Well, if somebody doesn't have the insurance and they elect to pay the fine, where does the money go? It goes to the government. It doesn't go to the insurance company. So how does that help them? It doesn't. Mandates just don't work. So um, the other bill I'd like to talk about for a minute is uh, House Bill 357. Um, I'm going to present it in front of the House Appropriations Committee this afternoon. And what it does is give tax credits to employers who make contributions to employee HSAs, health savings accounts. And that money can be used to pay their medical expenses. The employer also pays for a high deductible health plan. And usually these have uh, deductibles somewhere around $5,000. The reason for doing that is to make people responsible for their own health care. The American Academy of Actuaries came out with a study last year that showed that of those uh, companies that are using uh, HD, HSAs coupled with uh, HDHPs have a, um, what is it, uh, 7 to 12 percent decrease in their premiums every year, whereas a control group using standard policies had 8 to 15 percent increases every year. So that's the way we're going to bring down the cost of health care. And, and until we do that, until we reduce the cost, we're not going to be able to get a handle on it. Uh, we have been, for 45 years now, since the advent of Medicare and Medicaid, been increasing eligibility, increasing benefits, increasing subsidies, and we haven't solved the problem. You know, it's Einstein's uh, definition of insanity, where you keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result each time, and we're still doing it. It, it isn't going to work. And so until we make people responsible for their own health and their health care, we won't be able to solve this health problem. And uh, with that, I think I'll let it go and we can go to questions. I think we got a few minutes.